is it the right time to invest in Bitcoin? It's a question that tends to come up when Bitcoin's performing well, when it's in the news a lot. And the reason it's been in the news a lot recently has been that in the US, the regulator, the SEC, has recently approved the first bunch of ETFs that track Bitcoin. Hey, this is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts on a question that's been coming up a bit more recently in 2024, as it did back in 2021 and 2017 before that, which is, is it the right time to invest in Bitcoin? It's a question that tends to come up when Bitcoin's performing well, when it's in the news a lot. And the reason it's been in the news a lot recently has been that in the US, the regulator, the SEC, has recently approved the first bunch of ETFs that track Bitcoin. And it's a big moment because there's been a lot of speculation about this for the last few years. There's been a lot of anticipation about when this might happen. And it finally happened at the start of 2024. In the lead up to it, the Bitcoin price did go up a lot. It rallied into this news. So probably a lot of the excitement is already inbuilt into the price. Um, but the question is still a fair one. Is it the right time to invest? And I'm going to be answering this by really talking about the six things I think you need to consider before you invest into Bitcoin or for that matter, any other type of speculative investment. Because ultimately, Bitcoin, like investing into, let's say, a prospective lithium miner or a prospective AI you know, robotics company, it's speculative. It's an emerging technology. It's in the process of getting capitalized as the market tries to work out its value. And so I think you need to think about it in a portfolio as a speculative investment. And the first thing I think you need to think about is, um, are you able to invest? So, you know, my view is for people who haven't paid off their debts or who have high high interest debt still, investing just generally probably isn't the right thing for you. And you probably want to consider paying off any high interest debts first um, before you start investing into anything, let alone something that's quite speculative. The second tip I would have is that you want to limit your exposure. So although we have heard that obviously over the last 10 years, Bitcoin has done very, very well. It's gone up thousands of percents. It doesn't mean the same is going to happen into the future and you can't extrapolate that performance going forward. However, what we also know from Bitcoin is even though it has had that fabulous performance, there have been lots of big falls around the way. In fact, there have been three falls of over 80% over that time and a few more falls of over 50%. So if you have a bigger percentage of your portfolio tied up in this asset, um, even if it does very well over the long run, you're going to have to withstand some pretty turbulent times and have potentially some very tough conversations with your partner along the way. The great story I like to liken this to is Amazon, you know, post the um, dot-com bubble burst in 2000, 2001. Um, Amazon, which is obviously a wonderful company today, its share price fell by over 95%. So in order to enjoy the wonderful gains we've seen over the last 20 or so years, you had to put up with a 95% fall, which is that one of the reasons why for most people putting more than a small percentage in, of your portfolio in any one individual share or speculative investment like Bitcoin doesn't make a lot of sense. For our clients, when it comes to thematic type investments like um, Bitcoin or anything else of that matter, we would be suggesting a relatively small portion of your portfolio. The benefit of that being that you in, enjoy some gains if it does well, but also you're not pressured to sell if it doesn't end up going well and it's not going to really cause a huge dent in your portfolio performance. So make sure you've limited the exposure. That amount may be different for different people, whether it's 2% or 5% or 8%. You know, it does vary person to person. Um, we don't think it's necessary to have this in your portfolio, but if you are considering it, you know, really think about how much is in your portfolio and the impact it has on your returns and the volatility of your returns. The next point I think would be an important one to consider is know your counterparty risk. So the advent of these new ETFs is wonderful news for most investors who are looking to invest into ETFs because suddenly one of the biggest risks, which wasn't the prices going up and down in ETFs, but actually where your money was stored and where your Bitcoins were stored is now solved. Um, you know, where in the past Mt. Gox in 2011 and later FTX went belly up and surprised a lot of people because they exposed the issue of counterparty risk. ETFs solve for that because um, they are very tightly regulated um, they, the, the money is stored um, and the Bitcoins are stored in, um, you know, clearly audited storage and, and with reputable providers. So I think counterparty risk in an ETF format is a lot more, um, you know, transparent and clear for people and actually is a risk that ETFs solve quite well. But it's still something to consider when you're investing ETFs, understanding the counterparties and potential challenges in the future if those counterparties don't come good. 
Um, the next one would be to re remember to rebalance. So because Bitcoin has appreciated quite fast over the past, but being quite volatile, you know, a strategy that a lot of people would have benefited from both financially, but more importantly, psychologically is rebalancing. Um, because that allows you to basically harvest some gains when it's done very well and then reinvest when it hasn't done very well. And because it has had these 80% drawdowns along the way, 80% falls from high to low, having sold some a bit higher gives you the opportunity to confidently buy some a bit lower. So although a lot of people are uh, holders for the long run in Bitcoin, I think rebalancing part of your position is sensible because it really puts you in a positive frame of mind to, to buy back. But obviously you need to set your rebalancing strategy up front and you can't be prone to just deciding when you think markets will be cheap or expensive because, you know, from our observation, people don't get that right. You have to be quite methodical and you have to really set your parameters up front to be able to rebalance well. And that's what we do for all of the asset classes within the stock spot portfolios. We're not changing those parameters if they get hit. We do the rebalancing because it needs to be quite systematic. Um, and then the, the final tip I would have is to really ignore short-term market movements. If you do decide to invest in any sort of speculative investment, you have a reasonable time frame, you have a sensible amount of your portfolio in it, and you have the capacity to invest, then whether it goes up or down next week or next month should really be irrelevant for you. You need to set and forget, you know, put it in that drawer, so to speak, and ignore it. You know, lose your passwords, do whatever you need to do to not log in and check it every day. Because if you do, the chances are you're going to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. And you're going to really destroy all of the hard work that you've done putting a strategy together in the first place. And they're my tips for investing in Bitcoin if you're considering it in 2024. If that's content that interests you and you'd like to hear more like it, uh, please subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates whenever I update and post new videos.